Welcome to this podcast on, on burns. Burns are fairly common actually all over the world. They're a common problem in, in industrial countries, they're a common problem in developing countries. So wherever you work, you're going to come across burns. And excessive heat is, is perhaps the, the most obvious cause, leading to thermal injuries. So thermal injuries can be caused by flames, by steam, by hot fluids, by touching hot solids. All these things will impart heat into the tissues which can cause thermal injuries. And it's worthwhile looking around your environments and thinking about how burns might arise and how they could be prevented. Unguarded fires are an obvious danger to children. Dangling uh, flexes are, are an obvious danger. Overhanging pan handles are an obvious danger where a child can reach up and pull something, uh, pull hot fluids or hot food down over their heads or over parts of their body. Older people can be at increased risk as well because of reduced mobility and poor coordination. Often a common feature, as with all accidents, of course, is uh, alcohol intoxication. People that are drunk are more likely to have accidents, more likely to get burned. Now the severity of a burn depends on the amount of heat and the amount of contact time with the tissues of the body. For example, a temperature of 70 degrees centigrade or more will cause necrosis of pretty well the full depth of the epidermis in just a few seconds. So if things are very hot, they can cause a lot of damage in a short period of time. Hot, hot fat is a classic example. I mean, fat, fat can be at over 200 degrees centigrade, hot cooking oils, and can cause really nasty burns in, in very small periods of time. But in addition to heat, there's other causes of burns. Uh, radiation can cause burns, as you'll know if you've ever had uh, sunburn. Ultraviolet radiation uh, is, that, is the main cause of sunburn. Chemicals can cause burning. Uh, acids or alkalines uh, are examples. Ele ele electricity, electrical burns are another possibility. When an electric current goes through the body tissues, there is a resistance to that current. And that resistance generates heat. And electrical burns can often affect the deep tissues of the body because the electro electrical current is transmitted through deep tissues of the body. But it's still a cause of, a, a cause of burning. Let's think now about the pathophysiology of burns. Now, burns often affect the body surfaces, but of course, any tissue of the body can be affected if that tissue is heated up. And the direct effect of a burn will be the death of cells. It will cause tissue necrosis. Now, what actually happens here is that there is an increase in temperature in the tissues. And of course, tissues are largely made up of uh, proteins. And when you heat a protein, it will denature and coagulate. So what you get in a burn is coagulation necrosis. There will be coagulation of the proteins, and that will kill the tissues. You might have noticed this if you cook an egg. If you crack an egg and put it into your frying pan, the white part of the egg doesn't start off white. It starts off clear. And that is mostly albumin. The white part of the egg is mostly the protein albumin. But then as you heat it up, it goes from clear to being white. And what is actually happening there is the proteins are denaturing. The heat is breaking up the large, complex proteins. It's changing their nature and causing coagulation. And the same thing happens in a burn. The proteins will coagulate, causing coagulation necrosis. Around about the area of coagulation necrosis, there can be an area of constricted blood vessels with platelet coagulation. That's called the zone of stasis, and, and that, that, that can actually necrose as well over time. And around that, there's a, there's a painful inflamed area as well. Burns, of course, cause massive inflammatory reactions. Now, when we're thinking about burns, it's good to think about uh, local effects and systemic effects. 
let's start off by thinking more about local effects by describing um, how we classify burns. Now, burns are classified by the depth of skin which is affected by the injury. And the first classification uh, are superficial burns, sometimes called epidermal burns, also called first degree burns, actually. So superficial or first degree or epidermal burns, these only affect the epidermis. There is no dermal involvement. Sunburn, for example, will just affect the epidermis. Despite being superficial, these burns can be extremely painful and tender, especially if they're touched. And there'll be a red area, but if you press on that area, it will blanch readily with light pressure. And the reason it will blanch, the reason it will go white with pressure, is because you are squeezing the blood from the dermal blood vessels beneath. And that means that the dermal blood vessels are intact because they're blanching readily. Blistering doesn't usually occur with superficial epidermal burns. And usually they heal fairly rapidly. Because if you think about your anatomy, you've got the epidermis and you've got a germinative layer at the bottom of the epidermis. And if the epidermis, the lower layers of the epidermis are intact, that means that there can be cell division in this germinative layer of the epidermis. And these cells will simply rise to the surface and they will replace the damaged cells, the cells which have been damaged by the, by the epidermal superficial burn. So they heal fairly quickly and they should heal with, well, they will heal with perfect cosmetic results. The skin will look just as good afterwards. If you burn it repeatedly, of course, with sunburn, for example, you can get progressive skin damage. But from a single episode, it's going to heal as the tissues regenerate from the germ germinative layer of the epidermis beneath. Now the next classification of burns are partial thickness burns. Partial thickness burns. And partial, thick, partial thickness burns burn down into the dermis. So they can burn away all of the epidermis and start burning down into the dermis beneath. And uh, it's useful to classify, to subdivide this classification into superficial partial thickness burns and deep partial thickness burns. The deep partial thickness burns are also sometimes called deep dermal burns. So superficial partial thickness burns burn through the epidermis and can burn the top of the dermis. Deep dermal burns will burn away a lot of the dermis. They are deep partial thickness injuries. Now the superficial partial thickness burns can be extremely painful because the nociceptors, the pain receptors, are in the dermis. And if you take away the epidermis, that means that the dermal pain receptors, the dermal nociceptors, are exposed. And that can generate extreme amounts of pain. There's another two characteristics of superficial partial thickness burns which are useful to know about. And one is that the tissues will still blanch if pressure is applied. So if you put a glass on top of the uh, burnt area and press on it, it will still go white. And then when you take your glass off, it will go red again because the blood vessels lower down in the dermis are still intact. So they should still blanch readily. And another characteristic is that these burns generate blisters. Now, a blister is a collection of fluid above the germinative layer of the epidermis. And because these areas have been damaged, you're going to get inflammatory fluids collecting in them. But because the integrity of the tissues is reduced, the tissues aren't going, to, aren't going to be sticking together as well. And the fluids can accumulate in tissue spaces, in the dead tissue. So you get a lot of blistering because of the epidermal necrosis and subsequent edema and inflammation formation forming the inflammatory fluids. Now, as long as these burns are well managed, they should heal very effectively within a couple of weeks and they should heal with very good cosmetic results. So first of all, the fibroblasts and other cellular components of the dermis will undergo mitosis and secrete their structural products like their collagen and their elastic fibers. 
and the ground substance. So the dermal tissue can regenerate. But as well as that, in the dermis you have sweat glands, and going deeper down into the dermis you have hair follicles. And the sweat glands, and especially the hair follicles, are lined with epidermal cells. So it's as if the epidermis dips way, way down in the hair follicles, which of course go down into the dermis, and, and deep in the dermis, and even, even slightly below the dermis, that they are deep structures. And these hair follicles are lined with epidermal keratinocytes, the same cells that form the surface layer of the skin. And after an injury, there'll be mitosis in these deep preserved keratinocytes, and they will migrate back up to the surface of the wound. And as long as you can maintain a moist wound environment, the epidermal keratinocytes can migrate over the surface of the wound, meaning that you'll get regeneration of the epidermis. The epidermis will be replaced with new epidermis. And because it's the epidermis that gives the cosmetic results on the surface of the skin, you can get perfect cosmetic results because the epidermis has regenerated. The next classification of partial thickness burns are deep partial thickness burns. These are often called uh, deep dermal burns as well. And the burns extend down into the lower half of the dermis. And they can have very variable um, appearances. They might appear red or they might appear white. And uh, some have mottled red and white areas. But after a while, they won't blanch because many of the dermal capillaries have been lost. Actually, an acute deep dermal burn may, but after a while, after 24 hours or so, um, it, won't, it won't blanch because the capillaries are no longer intact. The, the, the capillaries have been necrosed with the rest of the tissue. Like the more superficial burns, there can be a lot of inflammatory swelling and tissue loss. And actually, because very often a lot of the nociceptors in the upper part of the dermis have been burnt away, these burns can be less painful. So the more superficial partial thickness burns are more painful than the deep partial thickness burns, because the deep partial thickness burns, the nociceptors are simply burnt away and they're not there anymore. Now these burns are difficult to heal. They can take many weeks to heal up because there's more dermis to regenerate and the epidermal type keratinocytes, the, the, the sort of cells that form the epidermis, they, they can be preserved but only in some of the very deep structures. So there's less of them left. There's less, less epidermal cells left to migrate up to the surface because more of them have been destroyed so epidermal regeneration can be, can be slow, and in, in some areas it can be hardly present at all, actually. And in these wounds heal by, uh, there's a lot of granulation tissue and uh, fibrous uh, scars can develop. Infections are a common complication that can further delay healing as well. And because of all these problems, most burns units, if they have the option to do so, will surgically remove the necrotic superficial tissue. They will surgically debride it uh, and then use skin grafting to close the wounds. And if that's done, that's associated with a much better prognosis and, and way less likelihood of uh, infection developing. Now, the final classification of burns are, are full thickness burns, sometimes called third degree burns. And full thickness burns, as the name suggests, all of the thickness of the skin will be necrosed. So the epidermis and the dermis will be lost, and these wounds can even go down to underlying subcutaneous tissues. But the full thickness of the skin is lost. And that means all of the potentially regenerative elements of the dermis and the epidermis are gone. The burnt tissue undergoes coagulative necrosis, and it forms just a layer of dead tissue called an S-scar. An S-scar is just this layer of dead skin. The skin's all been killed. It's all necrosed. And this is a very significant infection risk. So in burns units, they will surgically remove the S-scar and use skin grafting. If the S-scar is not surgically removed, it will probably fall off in two to three weeks anyway. But as I say, there's a very high infection risk associated with this dead tissue.
And uh, full thickness injuries can appear white, sometimes they're black and charred or brown and leathery. And of course they don't blanch with pressure because all of the blood vessels in the dermis have been destroyed. Full thickness burns are way less painful than partial thickness burns because all of the dermal sensory receptors have simply been burnt away. They're not there anymore. Of course, there can be very uh, painful areas um, around about the outside of the burn. But in the full thickness area, the, the skin is insensitive to touch. The, the skin is dead. The skin doesn't feel pain anymore. But as I say, there can be pain from surrounding areas of partial thickness injuries. And because all of the dermis and epidermis have, is lost, the opportunity for um, tissue regeneration in full thickness burns is very limited. And as a result, these burns can only regenerate very slowly from intact skin around about the outside of the burn. And without intervention, they'll heal by granulation and fibrosis, leaving deformity and, and massive scar formation which will give very poor cosmetic and functional results. And over time as well, the scars contract, which makes it even less, uh, e even, even worse cosmetic results and even less functionality. So if at all possible, Burns units will um, take away the dead skin and apply skin grafting. And that's, uh, that, that's associated with, with a good recovery rate if it's well done. Now as well, in, uh, as, well as assessing the classification, the thickness of a burn, it's also very important to assess the percentage of the body surface area which has been burned. This is important for prognostic reasons and it's important for calculating fluid replacement. And uh, there are charts that can do this quite accurately. And if you're working with children, it's, it's quite important to use these charts so that you can work out the percentage surface area. But with adults, there's, there's a nice, quick, ready reckoning way to do it. It's a bit approximate, but it's quite a useful rule to know about. And it's called the rule of nines. And uh, what this means is that the head is 9% of the body surface area, and arms are 9% of the body surface area each. The front of a leg is 9%, and the back of a leg is 9%. In other words, the whole leg is 18%. The front of the torso is 18%, so half of the torso is 9%, and the back and the buttocks are also 18%, so half of that area would also represent 9%. So it's all 9, so it's kind of easy to remember. And another rough and ready way of reckoning the surface area of a burn is looking at the size of the patient's palm. And the size of the patient's palm is usually about 1% of body surface area. Usually about 1% of body surface area about 1% of body surface.